Hey my squidlings, it's Katie here and I hope you're having an absolutely squidlicious day. So today I thought it would be fun to kind of start up a new series on this channel called Art Supply Face Off, as you might be able to tell from the title. And in these types of videos, I'm going to be pitting one supply up against another. Maybe they're similar, maybe they're not. Um, but I need your help to decide on what I should actually pit up against each other. So if you are listening to this and you're really interested in this series, please leave a comment down below in the comment section and let me know what art supplies you would like to see me test against each other. So today, I thought it would be fun to test out my current favorite watercolors, which are the Lucas watercolors right here, against the Kuretake Ganzai Tombi uh, 36 set, which are these right here. Now, in no means am I going to be uh, biased, at least I'm going to try not to be, and this isn't really trying to get to sell anything, I just want to see how different they are, how similar they are, um, and just kind of list off the facts against these because these are some of my favorite watercolors that I've used, and so I thought it would be fun to just kind of experiment with them. Alright, so now we are off onto the speed paint. We're starting out with the Kudatake Ganze Tombi watercolor set, and I have the set of 36. However, they do also come in 12 and 24, and as far as I know, you can only buy open stock at, like, jet pins. I'm sure in, like, a Japanese country, they probably also sell them in open stock, but as far as I know, at least... I can only get them at jet pens. Compared to a lot of other paints that are this quality, they really have a good price point, especially for what you get. For open stock, they're around $2.50, so it's a little bit more expensive. However, um, if you get them in a set, they're around a dollar a pan. So if you get the 36 set, generally on Amazon, it's like $35 and about $23 for a 24 set and so on and so forth. So it's actually really cost effective to get a set like this considering how large these pans are. These pans are about three times the size of a regular half pan and that is huge. Uh, so you get a ton of paint. These pans were designed to be able to use bigger brushes like Sumi brushes in them so they are a little bit bigger but I think that actually kind of plays to their advantage. There isn't any light fastness information on the pans as far as I can tell. However, with a quick Google search, there are other people out there who've done their own light fastness tests, and I actually have my own in the works. But uh, they found that all but four of them were not light fast. I know that one is a turquoise, two of them are blue, and I think one of them is a pink color. So those kind of tend to be a little shifty, but other than that, the other ones are pretty light fast, so that is always a nice thing. Since they're a traditional Japanese watercolor, they're going to be significantly more opaque than a regular watercolor that you might be used to. Think if a gouache and a watercolor just decided to have a kid. Like, that would be kind of what it is. They're not super opaque like a gouache, but they aren't completely transparent like a regular watercolor. And actually, I think that it it makes it kind of pretty, and it blocks out some of the light. Now, of course, you can have regular transparency with them. You just have to use a lot of water. However, if you do decide to use them rather thickly, they're going to be really opaque. Don't think that just because they're a little opaque, you can just do like gouache and paint light over it because it doesn't work that way. It just kind of blocks out the underneath of the paper showing through. I think that's what a lot of watercolors like to see is their paper showing through. A lot of these colors I find granulate, and if you're using a cold press or a rough paper, uh, it kind of sinks into the hills and valleys of the paper, and it actually creates a really cool texture that I really love because one of my favorite papers to watercolor on is cold press. However, if you don't like that, just beware that a lot of these do tend to granulate but if you use a hot press paper, it shouldn't be so bad. I know one of the things they like to mention about these paints is that they flow and blend really nicely together, and I can attest to that. I think that in water, these paints really just kind of burst, and they're just, it's really beautiful to watch watercolors just kind of flow in the water. However, if you want to make the um, effect more intense, you can totally add a little bit of synthetic or regular ox gall to your water, and that'll help your paints flow a little bit more. Another thing I like about these is they don't tend to stain too much, at least not in my experience. Uh, they're really easily lifted, which is nice. The addition of metallics in this set I think is pretty cool too because I do know, again, these are used for like calligraphy and stuff like that. 
So the addition of metallic is pretty cool. I thought it was a fun little addition that you can add a little bit of sparkle to whatever you're lettering or uh, painting. So I thought it was a nice little touch. Since these paints are so opaque, the addition of white really isn't that strange. I know that there are some watercolorists out there that traditionally like to paint with white. They like to paint thickly, and that's fine. However, a lot of times people, when they watercolor, they really don't want a white in their watercolors because it's almost pointless. However, since these are a little more opaque, you can totally add them to your watercolors and get a little bit more of a pastel -y look. Of course, you can always do whatever you want. I mean, that's the best part about art. Another thing about these Kuretake watercolors is they have a lot of colors that aren't traditionally found in a regular watercolor set, at least not ones that I have been exposed to. Um, they've got different shades of like turquoise, and this set has a ton of greens, which there's nothing wrong with that. Um, it's also got a light tealy color and a cornflower blue color, and those traditionally aren't really found in watercolor sets, but I think the addition of them actually makes this set unique, and that's another thing I like about it. And can we also talk about how gorgeous this watercolor set is just as a whole? It just, the packaging is so nice. It is in like a cardboard box and it's just got little gold embellishments on it. And uh, the top is green and the way they just sit in the palette, it just looks so aesthetically pleasing. And I honestly just think they did a wonderful job with the packaging. Unfortunately, though, along with the gorgeous packaging is the fact that they're really not that great for travel. Now, if you get the 12 set, it's not so bad, but the 36 set, I would hate to lug around. That would just be annoying. Unless you were to, like, DIY your own um, little compact travel thing, uh, it probably wouldn't work for you. However, do what you want. Uh, you know, you do you. If you think you could travel with this, then great. Um, but I definitely wouldn't be taking this out of the studio. So now on to the Lucas watercolors. I'm going to be painting the same exact picture uh, just in Lucas. Now Lucas colors did not have a lot of the colors that I painted with the Kudatake set. So I'm going to have to be mixing them, which isn't that big of a problem. I did paint the Kudatake one first, so I decided to base all of those colors on the picture based on that because, you know, I didn't want it to be too different. This is the Lucas 1862 set. They also have a regular set, but we're talking about the 1862 here. So these do come in 70 different colors, and 48 of them are single pigment colors, so that means you're going to get some really clean mixes with these 48 colors. They do also come in open stock and sets, and as far as I know, you can only get them on jerrysartorama.com, but I'm not 100% sure because they're German watercolors, so, you know, you'd have to, like, import them. Unless you're from around that area, and then it's probably no big deal to pick them up. However, at least for me, where I live, they're rather expensive, so getting them online, they cost around $4 or more per half pan, and that really just depends on what pigment that they're using in the paint, and of course they're more expensive if you get a whole pan or if you get a 24 milliliter tube of them. These are highly light fast though. They boast that a lot of their colors, if not all of them, are extremely light fast. So it's nice that they actually included their light fastness information. These paints are significantly more like traditional watercolors with their really high rate of transparency. Actually, these paints particularly boast that they have some of the highest transparency. I really can't say whether or not that's true, um, but they are really transparent and they are very nice to work with. Some of the colors in the set that I have, which is the 48 set, do granulate. However, it's not all of them, and if they do granulate, it's pretty insignificant. So if granulation is something that you don't want in your paintings, uh, you really won't have to worry about that with these. Compared to the Kudatake set, the Lucas set is a little bit more of a muted toned palette. There are some really bright colors, however, it also comes with some really muted colors to kind of balance that out, whereas the Kudatake set kind of has a lot of vibrant colors and not so many muted colors. Again, with the flow in water, this set has a really beautiful flow in water. However, I find that it's not as amazing as the Kudatake set, but I really do like how it just performs in water, and the nice thing is these really don't color shift too much. Uh, of course, the more water you add, um, the more shift it's going to have, but for the most part, they don't shift too much. 
Some of these colors are also pretty staining, so once you put a color down, hopefully you're ready to commit to it because it might be hard to lift it back up. Now, some colors, if you're quick enough, you can actually get to them before they stain your paper, but in my experience, because I've been painting with this set a lot, um, for the most part, they stain pretty much and uh, you're going to have a hard time lifting it off. One of the things I really like about the Lucas set is the case itself. However, it feels really cheap, but it is a really nice travel palette, especially when you want to take all 48 colors with you on the plane or to a park or something. It's got a little thumb hole on it so you can feel like a professional painter and look really cool doing it. So it's really great for travel. You can, if your purse is big enough, you could actually slip it in your purse. Uh, not pocket sized, unfortunately, but it is nice for travel. Now that I've shown you the speed paints of both of these pieces, here are, here they are in kind of their finality. Uh, so on the right hand side we have the Kuretake Gansai Tombi one, and then on the left side we have the Lucas Watercolors. And as you can tell, there is a bit of a difference between the two, of course, not counting painting differences, you know, just in the different, um, you know, the fact that I can't exactly replicate it on both sides. There are some differences. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but the Kuretake colors are a little bit more grainy in general than the Lucas colors. Uh, they've got a little bit more granulation than the Lucas colors, and a lot of the Kuretake colors, um, just in the set in general, they come with a assortment of colors that you normally wouldn't find in a regular set. And so with some of the Kuretake colors, I really didn't have to mix them, whereas to make it as even as possible, I had to try to mix the Lucas colors because since they're a German set, they are a little bit more traditional in the colors that they offer. Another thing to you might or might not be able to notice is the opacity of the Kuretake colors compared to the Lucas colors. Uh, since they're a Japanese paint, they tend to lean a little bit more to the opaque side. Now, that doesn't mean you can't see the white of the paper showing through. You can certainly water it down and have, you know, those effects just fine. But the thicker you apply your paint, the more opaque it is. Um, whereas, like, the Lucas, even in the black, as dark as I could possibly get it, you could still see some patches where the white is showing through, whereas in the hair on this one, uh, it is like jet black and you're not seeing through that anytime soon. And on some parts of her clothing, you can tell the opacity is a little different and all that stuff. So um, I really think they're both great paints. I think they're great in different applications. Um, I really like my Lucas set because it's easy to travel with. However, I really like my Kuretake colors because of the colors that they, you know, they provide. And plus, um, the pans are really huge and you get a great deal. Plus, the Lucas ones are, like I mentioned earlier, a little bit more expensive. So um, it really just depends on what you're in the market for. They're both great sets, and again, if you're interested in either of those sets, I will have them listed in the description below. I'm not really trying to sell them to you, I just want to list some facts, kind of pit them up against each other to show you uh, what each one can do. So, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did and you want to see more like it, don't forget to thumbs up the video and leave a comment down below and let me know what art supplies you would like to see up against each other. So, that is it for this video. Again, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, guys, toodaloo!